this is Glennon Cameron and in this video I'm going to show you how to make instant money be sure to listen from the, to the video from start to finish because there could be some Easter eggs in there you never know hey this is Glendon Cameron and I'm getting a lot of people who are talking about what is a service business and <laughs> I'm just sitting there like okay and then it hit me you know sometimes people don't know what they don't know now everyone has heard of Angie's List right and Angie's List is just a recommendation, uh, recommendation engine a review engine that made $315 million because it's a publicly traded company in 2014. Now, Angie's List deals with what? Service businesses. So I was like, you know what? Let me just go here and let people know what service businesses are and give you the categories of some of the things that I'm doing. There's a certain process that I have which is shunting some people, but I'm just going to suggest you go to the Angie's list and go through the categories because air duct cleaning is a service business. Alarms, service business, animal movement, cleaning of apartments, service business, land surveying, landscaping, lawn fertilization and treatment, lawn irrigation. There, there's so much. Now, a lot of these are one-off service businesses, like uh, let's see what the hardscaping and pavers. That's landscape architecture. Someone wants to have like a nice rock garden or maybe have a bricked out area in the backyard. That's what those guys do. Uh, there are people who install ceiling fans, carpet sales, carpet cleaning. All of these are service businesses. Now, part of the problem is we we have an issue with people working hard in this country in terms because you know, many people feel that it is beyond them. Uh, that's part of this whole thing of everyone getting a degree. You don't know how many people was like, well, I have a degree and I shouldn't do X, Y and Z jobs. Now, I'm going to tell you something about me. I know how to put drywall. I can do roofing. I can do masonry, light electrical. That's what I was taught as a kid. That was a normal rite of passage to a lot of men. A lot of folks can't do that stuff because it's beneath them. So now I just gave you the, the, the white space of why we have problems here. Everyone's going to college. Whether they finish or not, once you're indoctrinated with that mindset, it's there. And then we have these people who aren't doing these jobs. So what does that create? It creates marketplace inefficiency which creates profit so while everyone's going to get a degree and i will tell you if you're a kid and you're listening to this and you don't know what you want to do pick something that you halfway like learn a trade learn how to do drywall learn how to lay bricks learn how to weld welders in certain part of the country can write their own tickets right now right now just depends on what you want to do and learn that because you can always do something else later. And this is the thing. Everybody wants to do what I call a full enchilada. You want to do what you want to do, how you want it to do, in the time where you want it all to perfectly line up in that mythical, majestical moment. You just want it all to be so pretty and and you're stupid because it's just not going to happen like that. You're probably going to get everything that you want in stages. And for many people, that seems to be success or settling. I'll break it down for you. Let's say you, uh, you're you broke Dick Danny, right? And you have no money, but you have time and you have a few skills. So you put up an ad on Craigslist. I paint rooms, whole room. You provide the paint and I'll paint a whole room for $50. I'll do everything. I'll do taping. So you go there. You work for an hour or two or three hours, however long it takes you to do everything, and you leave with $50 cash. You're no longer broke Dick Danny. 
You're paid Percy. But many of you will shit on anything that will remove you from the position of being broke Dick Danny to pay Percy because it's not what you want to do. Which is cool if you've got the money to live your life the way you want and you don't have to depend on anyone else. It's cool if you're not living with your daddy and your mama. It's cool if you ain't living with your grandparents. It's cool if you're a 100% self-sufficient adult that can live on their own. But if that's not you and you need the assistance of the government, you need the assistance of your parents, you are penniless Priscilla and broke Dick Purse. I mean, broke Dick Danny. You're not paid Percy. So you need to say fuck choice for the moment. Get yourself balanced out. Get some money in your pocket. Become a valuable asset to society. And then once you are able to sustain yourself on your own efforts, then you can start looking around doing shit that you want to do. This is, you know, from the brother you never had. The dad you never had, because there's a lot of you foolish fools out there who think that you can do exactly what you want and you will waste precious time and energy jacking off. And then you'll be 30 something and you'll be 40 something. And you'll be 50 something wondering what the fuck happened to your life. I was talking to an investor and he's going to come on when I start the shows up. The man had a business for 30 years he retired, then he's become an investor, and he's got enough investments where he's going to China for 30 days. And that's all he does. But let's go back. He spent 30 years building the business. This is how it goes. But many people are, are in broke dick Danny status, but they want to act like they're paid Percy because, see, paid Percy has choice. Paid Percy has choice. Pay Percy can do what Pay Percy wants to do. But many of you want the accolades, the abilities, and the assets, and the attributes of a Pay Percy when you're broke dick Danny. I had a fool that wanted to argue with me last night about something. And, you know, it, it was it was it was incredible because many people in this country actually think that if they have to work too hard, something's wrong. I'm going to give you a lesson here. Typically, when you start a business, expect shit to go wrong. Typically, when you start a relationship, expect shit to go wrong. Now, there are people like, well, you know, that's being pessimistic. You are not sitting there looking for the best. No, that's not being pessimistic. That's being realistic. And see, the second part, because many people have limited intellect and can't think more than five or six seconds in a row before they get confused is when you expect things to go wrong, you start to build contingency plans. So when you start a business, it's like, okay, I start this business. What's going to go wrong? And then how can I solve that problem before it happens? That's called being an adult. That's called being responsible. Success by its nature is inherently being more responsible the more successful you are the more responsible you will be that is how that will go and many people are so against that because of the fantasy of the internet now like i said go to angie's list hit you know hit service categories and just go around just look you will see so many things that you could possibly do, but this is just the home stuff. Uh, let's roll up here. Basement waterproofing. Okay. It's got all this stuff. But a lot of the businesses that I put down, like here, screen repair, sewer cleaning. You know, that goes toward plumbing, snow removal. I'm going to give you a business that you need to go ahead and get set up for now. Now, like, like Glendon, whoa, whoa. There is no snow. I mean, a lot of snow is disappearing. It's spring and it's going to be summer. See, once again, broke dick Danny, you are looking at avoiding hard work. What you need to do is everyone that has the need for snow removal, you need to start talking to them now. It's like, hey, you know, uh, next season, I am starting a snow removal business. And what I want to do is put you on the list. And potentially put you on the subscription service. Matter of fact, if you pay me now on the subscription service, 
you know, whatever snow removal is, because I'm gonna I'm gonna give you the deal what my uh, lawn guy does for me. And you can just say like, you know, right now I can do like yard work or whatever, but pay me twenty five bucks a month, and you know, no matter what happens, it's only twenty five bucks a month. Now. You could, you know, you got to price this correctly based upon your region and what people normally pay for this service. So, you know, I'm just putting the number out there. But if you get them on this subscription service now where they don't have to call someone to remove the snow and, you know, if you're a responsible and respectable person, they can trust you and you start doing like things, you've automatically created yourself predictable income for something to come because the snow is going to come. And I mean, it might be a heavy season. It might be a light season. But, you know, you appropriately or price it, start getting paid now. And, you know, like, well, why would someone want to start paying now for something that's not going to happen for many months? We live in a society where people are doing everything they can to buy back their time. I have a friend who is single. She has no kids. I've known her 10 years. She's had a housekeeper ever since I've known her. Ever since she's not, there's many people like that. That a housekeeper, a land, she has a landscaping guy. She has a lawn guy. She has a housekeeper and a lawn guy. She does none of that stuff herself. There are plenty of people like that. Uh, I'm probably going to put some video at the end of this to show you what went down at my house, because you know, <laughs> I wake up this, you know, I wake up to this beeping because this big ass truck is dumping all this mulch in the backyard. And well, not actually at the edge of the driveway. And then they're coming in and they're spreading out mulch because my deal is I pay 200 bucks a month and they handle everything for the year, including straw, reseeding, all that stuff. And there's sometimes might come once a month, twice a month, may not need it. And then as the spring, you know, moves to summer, it's going to be here every week. I don't have to think about it. Now, there are some of you who are going, wow, that's a lot of money. I could do that myself. Save me some money. Okay. Let me go ahead and try to help you outgrow your upbringing. I used to think like that. That is the scarcity mindset. Now, yesterday I had four phone calls. I was working on some templates. I was working, you know, adding materials to the course, planning The work that I did yesterday, and I worked all day yesterday because I'm home alone like the little kid, will actually bring in enough money that will pay for the lawn service, not this year, not next year, in a year, but probably for the next six, seven years. The work that I did yesterday, the seeds and stuff that I laid. Now, what I'm trying to teach you is that when you move from broke dick Danny land, And you start to think like, hey, Percy, you start to think in terms of what's happening two years from now, three years from now, because there's this whole thing going, I'm not going to think about what's going to happen next year. I'm just living my life one day at a time. These are some aimless fucks. Yeah, I know that's a popular thing because this is the thing. If you're healthy, which I hope you are, if you do many of the right things, which I hope you will. You're going to be here next year and you're going to be here five years from now and you're going to be here from 10 years from now. You're going to be here 20 years from now. You're going to be here 30 years from now. And the sooner that you start to plan for your life as it comes, a lot of stress will be reduced. Uh, Like me, I had a plan. This stuff, all this stuff, it's a plan. These were goals. My goal when I came out of the storage auction business was to maintain my freedom after having my bouts of illness and watching my partner succumb to cancer. It's like, I want to be free. I want to be healthy. And I don't want to be really tied to anything that I don't want to do. So freedom is at the top of my food chain. And everything I do is dictated to freedom. I don't want to drive. Okay, so I'm going to work from home. I don't want to deal with a bunch of crazy ass people. Okay, I work. I choose who I get to work with. I created this because I planned for it. It didn't happen. Go back to my earlier videos and you will hear me. It's like, well, this channel was designed to sell this book. This is a sales channel. This channel is designed to sell products. That was the plan. It didn't just happen. It wasn't. So enough about me. You can come here, go to Angie's list, go through these things, do some research, use your brain 
and you can find something that you can do where you are and start making money tomorrow. Uh, someone hit me up. Uh, okay. Um, we have this. Uh, and I thought this by Jeremy was a good question. If you say it takes six months to start an online business and two years to build a successful online business, how long should it take to start a successful service business? Two weeks to 90 days. Yeah, two weeks to 90 days. That's it. If you get out there and hustle. Now, see, the thing is, you have, you actually have to talk to people. When I created 30 days to 2500 uh, one of the, the modules was go out and introduce yourself to 10 people because there's a lot of folks who are scared of people. You cannot be in the sales prof profession and be in the service business if you're afraid of people. And then uh, we had this question, and this is Grant. But let's say you have a person who's being conservative for the time being and wants to earn three G's a month for now. How long would that take on average? OK. This is the thing. When I get a question like this, because this is a simple question that has a very complex answer. Let's just assume that Grant is a remarkable human being with a cream, an extremely voracious work ethic. He's a he's just out there. He's a go getter. Right now, if Grant gets into the lawn service with one lawnmower. One lawnmower, not even a truck, a lawnmower in a car. He's he's got to collapse the thing and put the lawnmower in his trunk. That's that's all he has. He has a lawnmower. No, he didn't even have a lawnmower. He actually got to put the lawnmower on his credit card. He's got to go to Home Depot, spend two fifty, three hundred, whatever they go for. Spend that, and he's just got a car. All right, this is Grant. Now, if Grant every fucking day got out and hi, right, my name is Grant. I see your yard needs to be cut. Now I got a guy. Hi, my name is Grant. I see your yard needs to be cut. If Grant went out and did that every fucking day, he would be making $200 to $1,000 a week, depending upon his location, in a matter of days. If he went, Hi, my name is Grant. I see that your yard needs to be cut. If he kept doing that every time, got in his car, got in his car, didn't even do it structure, structured like I did in my course where I teach people how to actually appropriately solicit their friends and family. If he just did it unstructured, just out there hustling in the raw, he would make money in a matter of hours or a few days. Now to the three G's, once again, let's assume Grant is just super hustling. He gets in there. And he learns how to get referrals. He learns how to talk to people. He starts getting more yards. Grant could be making this 3000 the first fucking month. But see, it's going to take. Hi, my name is Grant. I see you need your yard cut. That's the problem. This is all this, you know, this questions and stuff is like, how do I get out of how do I avoid working that damn hard? That's it. Because if you go. Hi, my name is Grant. If you just keep doing that, and I'm about to go really crazy because this is something that I have done, and my friend dared me to do it. I was in a club with a friend, and you know, I already know that the uh, price of pussy is an all time low because of historical events. It used to be that you had to kill a dragon or a slay of, uh, or take over a foreign land and enslave a people, you know, get some pussy. That was like, that's what you had to do as a man to get pussy back in the day. Now you can just send a text. And one of my friends was like, you know, it ain't that, like that. Also, some stuff that, you know, I put in disruptive mating. I just went to the bar because I had scoped out some things. And I do dare me put 100 bucks on the table because I was talking shit. And I was like, I'll go ask just straight up for pussy. And I was like, I'll go up to 10. And he's like, you won't do that. And I did it. And I went to the first lady and I said, like, excuse me, you know. I thought you really incredibly lovely and I won't take you home tonight. And she's like, mm -mm. OK, then I went down the bar to the next chick, said the same thing. And she's like, you just asked her. Nah. OK, then I moved down to the corner. So I'm at three and I was like, hey, I just want to fuck you tonight. And she's like, you you pretty bold. 
ding, ding, ding. See, this is what happens. If you're bold enough to do something like that, you won't get to 10. You won't get to 10. Now, that's extreme. So if you can. Hi, my name is Grant. I see your nard needs to be cut. If you can keep doing that and get over the rejection, you could be at 10 G's in 90 days. See, it isn't the system. That's the problem that so many people have. It's not the system. It's not the instructions. It's are you willing to get up and fight every fucking day? That's the time. If you are willing to get up and fight eight hours a day, you're going to get to that three G's quicker. If you only want to fight for two hours a day, it's going to take much longer. If you want to get out and fight for 12 hours a day, you're going to get to that three G's quicker. So that's the time thing. It's not the system. It's not the training. It's not the lesson. It is you. It is what you are fucking going to do. It's you. And that's why when I get these questions like, well, what they're really saying is, how can I do this and not lose or risk anything? And the thing is, the way the game is set up, there's no way. And you don't want it to be fair. And you know, you don't want it to be safe. Because if it was fair, you could not make money on a proportion to your efforts, which will happen if you keep putting forth effort. This is the reason I'm doing this and I'm going through these courses is because I understand. And here's a question right here. Uh, that comment. Man, if I had the money to do it, it's not a lack of motivation. It's a lack of money. I'm trying to form a business as we speak. I don't have the money to pay bills and you and to form my business. OK, now that's real. So to Antoine 17, because I'm going to type this in there, what he needs to do is whatever business he can do that can get some cash. Remember, we're here in Angie's list. Uh, put up an ad. I'll paint the room. All right. Let, let's let's just go. Let's just let's really get down to it. He may have to undercut everybody. Like, say, if painting services are 100 bucks, he may have to do rooms for 25 Because here's the key. Man, if I had the money to do it, it's not a lack of motivation. It's a lack of money. Let me highlight that. When you don't have money, you don't have fucking choice. It, it's... No clearer than that. And that's one of the reasons that many of you struggle because you feel that you have choice when you were broke. Dick Danny, you have no money. You, you no, I'm not talking to Antoine 17 because he's like, hey, you know, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying. I'm giving him a little different direction. What I'm saying is, is when you don't have any fucking money, you don't have any fucking choice. And a lot of you believe you have choice and you're buying into these. Well, I'm special and the self-esteem movement. But every day life is kicking your ass. But you special, right? You special. So that's the deal. The time is, are you willing to go out and fight? Are you willing to go out and hustle every day? That's it. I knew that. I, and I'll even tell you my plan of uh, when I was doing. When I went to this YouTube channel, I wanted to do the book. I had a plan and I gave myself two years this had to happen in 24 months or I was going to have to do something else. Now, no, two years. I didn't go, you know, 30 days. I didn't go 90 days. I didn't go a month. Uh, no, I, I didn't go a quarter. I said two years because I knew it was going to take time. And once again, many of you have great ideas, wonderful ideas, wonderful concepts, but your your time frames are so skewed and so fucked up that you're never going to be as great as you can be because you can't stick to one thing long enough to realize it. All, all these, all these, all these businesses can make a millionaire. Every business on here, all of this stuff can make you a millionaire. Yeah. Cleaning ceiling fans is a matter of scale. Everything. Ceramic tile. Yep. Can do it. So it's not, the business. Once again, these questions are how can I not lose? You're going to lose before you win. Just go out and start losing today as fast as possible so you can get that feedback and that knowledge so you can win later. Because as long as you're like, well, I'm not, if I'm going to lose, I'm not going to jump in the arena. And if you jump in the arena, you're never going to get the gold medal. It's, that, it's just that simple. It's just that simple. And, you know, with, uh, the premium sellers. You need to have something going on. Um, 
because the thing is, let's go back to Antoine. His situation is not going to change unless he changes his mindset. He may have to take two bullshit jobs, shit he hates to get money to move to the next level. I did it. I worked in the fucking landfill picking up diapers because of EPA regulations. I did that shit. Did I want to do it? Nope. Was I happy? Nope. Was I happy with the money? Nope. But I was broke dick Danny. And when you have no money, you have no choice. That's a problem that many people need to deal with. So this is how you can create an instant business. Go to the service section. I mean, literally, I'm going to give you a template. You can go on Craigslist today and to the service section Whatever, you know, like I clean houses, I, I do painting, I do lawn service. Now, the thing is, you're not going to get hit on from Craigslist that fast because it's, it's competitive. But you go out there and put the ad up. And this is what I want you to do. I want you to go ahead and put up a Craigslist ad because it's going to force you to define your business model. It's going to force you to define your services. I'm going to tell you something that happened to me when I left the military. I don't know if I've ever shared the story. I was trying to start a lawn care service and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. This, yeah, because this was after some of the other business. I, this is so crazy. I had left the military at ETS and I had 60 days of vacation. So that was one of the reasons I was able to get out. So I was going to continue to get paid for three months. So I wasn't really motivated to get a job even though and also i knew i can get one i had a part-time job so i went and i got a truck i went and went and got a truck traded in my car i went and bought a lawnmower didn't understand a thing about advertising or marketing i had a notebook a notebook so i rode around in buckhead with a notebook and i was writing my name my number and lawn service and stuff in it which was illegal in mailboxes now this is what's so funny i spent one day doing that one day uh became demoralized because no one was calling me back ended up taking the truck back got my car back because it, it, the truck was for me to do the lawn business two weeks after i stopped doing that I got a phone call from a lady. Hey, I got your um, sheet of paper in my mailbox. I need my yard cut. And she was from Boston. She's a yard. And knowing what I know now, see, I didn't understand what I was doing. What had happened was normal. I was approaching people who didn't have a valid need at that moment. But putting notebook paper scrawling my name and phone number on a sheet of paper got me a call that i could have made some money if i had a better sense of business at the time because see now let's let's you know if you want to do this i would not you know take a notebook because the thing is well let's stick with that it actually worked you understand this now you know i was a little demoralized i was butt hurt i, I was feeling you know my ego was shattered because you know i did all this stuff and nobody was calling me now, what I would do today, if it was, you know, no, if, I, if I could go back in time with the knowledge I have, right, for the sake of this, we can do that. I would get the truck. I would get the lawnmower. But see, there would be one big, big difference. I would have went to 10 times as many homes as I did that first day. I would have stayed out to 10 o'clock stuffing those sheets of paper in mailboxes. And I guarantee you, if I stayed out longer, I would have encountered someone that needed their yard cut that day. See, I stayed out maybe six, seven hours because, you know, I was just putting stuff out. People were looking at me weird. I was feeling self-conscious. But knowing what I know now, I would have kept my ass out there. I would have been out there from eight o'clock to eight o'clock stuffing. A, or, you know, for some people to really know, knowing what the advanced uh, techniques, I would say, hey. Hey, my name is Glendon Cameron, and I want to offer you a complimentary yard service. And well, well, what do you mean? What's your name again? Glendon Cameron. Let me get this straight, buddy. You're going to cut my yard for free? Yes, sir. What's the catch? Well, the catch is, is it, and then you're right, there is a catch. 
that if I do a good service, you don't have to pay me today, but you pay me next time. And if I do a good service, you will recommend me to three of your friends. And if I don't do a good service, I get in my truck, take my lawnmower and go away. Really, buddy? For really? Edna. Edna. Hey, hey, this is Glendon. This is my buddy Glendon. He's going to cut our yard. No, you don't have to do it for free. No, 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 no. I want to pay you. I really like how you do business. I just taught you something there. Now, how many of you are actually going to take that information and go out and do something? Because what I just told you can make you a lot of money for free. But you got to execute. You got to execute. The question is, are you going to execute? So that's what service businesses are. That's how you can research it. That's how you can do this stuff. And once again, if you want to be a part of premium sellers, the links below, you can still get in at $500 a month. You're going to make way more money than you pay 10 to 100 times. And if you don't like it, you can cancel any time. How's that? And that's the deal. That's the deal.